Hello everybody, my name is Ming Zhou from the Danish company Chikra and the title of my presentation is Design of a Modulated FSS Subreflector for a Dual Reflector System. First, a little motivation and background for the work. As we know, multiband antenna systems are widely used for space applications. A popular example is the Cassini spacecraft, where the high-gain antenna consists of a Cassegrain dual reflector system with a frequency selective soft reflector. The FSS soft reflector separates the different frequencies and thereby provides the multiband operation of the antenna. Now, the sub reflector of these and Cassegrain and dual reflector systems are often doubly curved, and uh, this complicates the manufacturing of the FSS sub reflector, and this gives higher costs and risks. Therefore, simpler surfaces are actually preferred. But uh, because of a non optimal illumination onto the main reflector, the performance degrades. To compensate uh, the, for this, one solution is to shape the main reflector surface, which is the uh, traditional approach. Uh, another novel solution is to use a modulated FSS subreflector with varying sized FSS elements. And the latter is actually the topic of this presentation. So the objective of this presentation is to present the design of a modulated conical FSS subreflector in a Cassegrain dual reflector to emulate an actual displaced hyperboloid surface. Let us consider the classical SKF band Cassegrain dual reflector system with the FSS subreflector. We have the S band feet above the subreflector and the KA band feet below. This means that the FSS subreflector needs to reflect in KA band and to be transparent in S band. In our specific case here, the main reflector has a diameter of 2 meters and the subreflector has a diameter of 0.28 meters. Now, ideally, the surface of the subreflector is a hyperboloid, but as mentioned before, the doubly curved surface complicates manufacturing and a single curved surface is actually preferred because it will ease the manufacturing process. This could, for instance, be a conical subreflector where the shape of the subreflector is a cone. In our antenna system, we have defined the conical subreflector to be as close to the ideal hyperboloid as possible. The red is a conical subreflector, and the brown is a hyperboloid. Even though the shapes are close to each other, there is actually a significant degradation in performance when using the conical subreflector. This is, for instance, shown here, where the red curve is the radiation from the antenna system using the conical subreflector whereas the blue curve is when using the hyperboloid subreflector. Now, the idea is that we want to use a modulated FSS over the conical surface such that we can compensate for the non-optimal illumination by shaping the reflected beam from the subreflector. Essentially, we are considering a curved FSS-backed reflectory. For the specific design, we want to consider some representative frequency ranges. So in S-band, we need a peak gain larger than 30 dBi between 2 to 2.3 GHz. And in KA-band, a peak gain larger than 54 dBi between 25.5 to 27.5 GHz. Before going into details of the design, a few words about the software tool and method that we used for this work. For the design of the modulated FSS subreflector, we use the direct optimization design procedure that is adopted in the Tigra software, Cubes. Cubes is a dedicated software tool for the design of quasi-periodic surfaces such as reflect arrays, transmit arrays, and frequency selective surfaces. It is one of the five products that is included in the Tigra tools framework and is particularly suited to what we are trying to achieve in the current work. For the FSS design, the current approach that is up commonly adopted is to design the FSS at the unit cell level. For periodic FSS, this is the only step that is needed, but for a modulated FSS, an indirect optimization needs to be carried out. This means that the FSS elements are often designed to fulfill certain intermediate goals, for instance to match a certain amplitude or phase for a certain instance angle. 
With cubes, we carry out a direct optimization of the FSS, meaning that we optimize all FSS elements simultaneously to directly fulfill goals on the radiation pattern. This is often specified on the final radiation pattern of the entire antenna system. And to illustrate this, let's consider the figure to the left. It means that we are not optimizing the FSS for its radiation onto the main reflector, but the rather radiation pattern from the main reflector. This is necessary to obtain high performance, uh, in particular if the optimization is to be performed over a wide frequency range. For the analysis of the modulated FSS, the same method used for reflect arrays is considered, namely the local periodicity approach. This means that each array element is analyzed assuming that it's located in an infinite array of identical elements. Based on the reflection and transmission response of the elements, equivalent currents over the FSS surface is formed from which we obtain the final radiation pattern. In cubes, this method can be used for both planar and curved surfaces, and the accuracy has been verified in a number of publications against full wave solutions and actual measurements. For the FSS, it needs to be reflective in KA band and transparent in S band. There are many unit cells that can fulfill this requirement, but our choice fell on a dual layer square loop. This is a quite common FSS element and is known to provide good performance. The elements are embedded within a multilayer sandwich structure, which is uh, inspired by previous work for space applications. And using cubes, we optimize the side lengths of the loops such that it reflects between 25.5 to 27.5 GHz and is transparent between 2 to 2.3 GHz. If you look at the spectral response for different incidence angles in the two bands, S band to the left and K A band to the right, one can see that the transmission and reflection losses are below 0.25 dB in all cases. This indicates that the element worked as intended. In order to shape the reflected beam from the sub-reflector to compensate for the non-optimal illumination from the conical shape, we need to be able to control the reflection phase by adjusting the size of the elements. But at the same time, the emphasis needs to be reflective at K band when we vary the dimensions of the elements. If you vary the side length of the elements facing towards the KA band feed and maintaining the dimensions of the elements facing the S band feed, we get the phase and reflection response as shown here. To the left, we show the reflection phase curve where we achieve a phase range around 200 degrees. For a reflector ray, a range of 360 degrees is usually desired. But for our, our application, where the hyperboloid we are trying to emulate is actually very close to the conical FSS, a phase range less than 360 degrees is enough. To the right, we show the reflection loss when the elements are varied, and it is seen that the reflection loss is below 0 0.4 dB meaning that the FSS is actually still reflective. This shows that the elements on the layer facing the S-band feed are actually acting as a ground plane for the elements facing the Ka-band feed. And this is exactly the behavior that we're looking for, similar to a FSS-backed reflectory. Since the elements behave as desired, we can now proceed to the design of the modulated FSS. As already mentioned, we are trying to emulate a hyperboloid with the elements. Most work in the field of reflector rays will consider an indirect approach, where the element dimensions are selected to match a certain phase change to emulate a certain surface. Using cubes, the optimization targets the desired end results directly by optimizing all the elements simultaneously to fulfill the specifications of the entire antenna system. After letting cubes doing its work, we can then have a look at how the FSS layout looks like. We show here the FSS layout in the layer facing the KN band feed, and one can clearly see the variation over the surface. In a similar way, we show the FSS layout in the layer facing the S band feed. Here, one can see the elements do not very much. And this is somewhat expected as these elements shall act as a ground plane. 
Here we show the radiation patterns in the upper and lower frequencies at Ka band. The red curves show the radiation pattern of the antenna system if the periodic FSS is used on the ideal hyperboloid subreflector. The blue curves show patterns for the periodic FSS on the conical subreflector. And the black curves show the patterns for the optimized modulated FSS on the conical subreflector. It is seen that the modulated FSS improves antenna peak gain compared to the periodic FSS on the conical subreflector with almost 7 dBs. However, the hyperbolic periodic FSS still provides the best performance. But this is a price that needs to be paid for the simpler manufacturing process of considering a singly curved surface. Similarly, we show the radiation patterns in the upper and lower frequencies at S-band. The red curves is a case without any subreflector. The black curves show the patterns for the optimized modulated conical FSS, and the blue curves show the patterns for the periodic cuboidoid FSS. It is seen that the performance are very similar, but the modulated FSS provides an additional loss of approximately 0.3 dB compared to the periodic cuboidoid FSS. But in all cases, the gain is well above 30 dB as specified in the requirements. And this brings to my final slide. So we considered a SKA band category reflector with a FSS subreflector. To simplify the manufacturing process, the subreflector has a cone shape instead of a hyperboloid. This gives degraded antenna performance due to the non-optimal illumination of the main reflector. Then, by using a modulated FSS subreflector with varying sized FSS elements, one can compensate for the non-optimal illumination and thus achieve antenna performances close to the ideal hyperboloid case, but with the simpler manufacturing process because of the singly curved subreflector. In this presentation, we only considered goals on the peak gain, but one could easily include other specifications such as side load level, cross polar levels, or any other requirements that may be in the antenna system. And with that, I thank you for your attention.